My snowboarding is a battle, a constant test for life. Things that come too easily are simply not interesting to me. It's now been already 20 years of snowboarding, 20 years of discovering myself, discovering the world, discovering the mountains, discovering my limits. 20 years of a quest that has made my life amazing, but that has also so many times been really close to take it away from me. 20 years of snowboarding that have slowly led me to where I am today. My snowboarding is a constant battle between the good and bad voices in my head. One that reminds me of all these incredible sessions and the other one which tells me this could be my last. I think a lot of people see what I'm doing as uh, really crazy and unreachable. So maybe for some people it inspires them because I live the things that they wouldn't want to be living. But maybe some of the people just think I'm ridiculous and they watch it, you know, like just saying, oh, he's going to kill himself anyways. <laughs> Living the dream has a price, and that's listening to the voice that keeps me alive. The voice that makes me think of the feeling of falling down some cliff. That makes me wish for bad weather. 
that voice that makes me imagine how it would be to fall into a crevasse or to suffocate under the snow. That makes me think of all those that haven't been as lucky as I have, gone before their time, taken by the mountains, the mountains we love so much. That voice that reminds me of all the comments that I get to hear from people. How crazy I am. All these comments that remind me of Mila, my six-year-old daughter, and how I shouldn't be taking so many risks anymore. All these comments that tell me that I should be moving to a more normal life before it's too late. But what's a normal life? I've never really had one. This war between the voices in my head is perhaps what gives me the inspiration. The inspiration that takes me to new places. Plan uh, to go on that moony hill up there, which looks super close, but which is not. And so we're gonna walk through the woods first cross a valley and then get up there. Then we're gonna find these holes. It's all about the search for the hole. There exist en fait des trous, des showrooms en fait qui qui traversent les montagnes en fait qui sont percés et où le vent met de la neige à l'intérieur. Supposed to be like three, four hours till the base of the couloirs, and then we're gonna maybe try to find a spot to sleep down there. Donc c'est un peu comme des trous de spéléo. Et en fait, la roche est très calcaire, karstique, et en fait, les, les voûtes arrivent au bout d'un moment à s'écrouler, et ça fait des ouvertures à travers la roche qui permettent de passer à l'intérieur. It's not just about riding, about looking for the right spot to, to shoot. It's more about finding the combination between the best riding and the best imagery. It's always good, I think, to, to do something different that makes you able to to improve your snowboarding. Instead of going across the world, uh, you know, our exotic trip of the year was to go in the south of France to, uh, to look for these caves that we've heard of. It's unbelievable, it's like plus 20 outside and the snow is still cold here. Like it's so hard to believe that everything has been filled up by, by the wind. Every noise, every little sign in the snow, in the skies, in the air, remind me that I know how to do this. Everything is becoming clear and more familiar. 
and I finally start to feel like I belong here. Very much like this feeling we all have when we walk. We don't think of falling. It's as natural as that for me when I'm riding. Once I've dropped in, I see the way, and all that negative interference in my head vanishes. Every decision becomes simple. I can feel every turn, every bump, every drop. It seems like I'm in a dream. I feel alive. What we do is the combination of all the experience we've had in our lives. All the climbing, all the snowboarding, everything comes together at one point. And Sam, for example, has been a mountaineer his whole life. He's just so uh, at ease in the mountain, in the ice. And that's something you can't learn from one day to the other. It's definitely nice sometimes to get someone that uh, inspires you. With Xavier, it's working really well together. We don't need to speak too much. We fly up to a zone, we scope the lines, and it's always rotating really fluid, and that's why we, we get shots in half a day. Took the helicopter at eight, and we were back having a pizza at 12 o'clock in Zermatt. Snowboarding is, you know, is a, is a tool of powder before everything else, I think. Just taking a piece of wood, seeing a mountain and just slide down on the most natural way. All it takes is one idea and you realize that there's so much to discover still and so much to, so many ways to approach the mountain, so many ways to ride, so many terrains to ride in the world that, uh, you know, as long as I'll be motivated, there will be stuff to do. Chances of being born are so slim, so keep warm, so keep warm, and take some heart being born and quite so young. You can
can learn to talk and learn to walk in your own time. Your time it's the same, that battle between the good and bad voice, every time that same fight between my brain and my feelings, and every time I have that precious certainty that snowboarding is my reason to live. Sometimes it doesn't make sense what I say, but whatever. What, what, what does your dad do? Snowboarding. Is he a good snowboarder or is he rubbish? Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy like my dad. Yeah. I sit on the chair here. Guida, you, you sit down here. And uh, we fly the door open. And this is kind of the position we're filming to make it a little bit safer. How steep is this slope? <laughs> About three degrees. Hey. Oh. Oh, man, it's scary. <laughs> 